Yo, this thing is finished. Anyways. Hey guys, so this is the first video that I'm actually talking face to face with the, the five subscribers that I have that actually watch my videos. And I want to make a short video just to explain, give you guys an update on my life, um, what I've been doing for the past year in Hong Kong living alone, and uh, how has my transition been from graduating, moving back to China, and then eventually coming to Hong Kong. And uh, I'll probably add in, like some snippets of uh, things that's been happening this year. You guys can probably find the footage from the previous videos. But um, this is the first video that I'm gonna try and make an actual entertaining vlog. So yeah, I hope, hope you guys enjoy. First thing that comes to mind is um, furniture is not cheap. Furniture is pretty expensive. Uh, I'm very privileged and I'm very grateful that my parents are basically uh, allowing me to stay in our apartment in Hong Kong for free and uh, I just have to take care of the utility bills. But the problem was when I first arrived in Hong Kong, the previous uh, tenant that my parents were renting the apartment to, they decided to basically take all the furnitures with them to their new place. And I arrived to Hong Kong basically to an empty apartment where I had one chair. And I remember, I think I once like a small desk, which I eventually sold to someone else. Um, but yeah, I, I remember doing this IKEA trip and it's... IKEA, it's, it's cheap when you're shopping with your parents, but if you're doing your, your own furniture shopping by yourself, those price tags really hit hard. <laughs> My advice for anyone who is uh, moving out or going to a city for the first time, living by themselves, um, when it comes to furniture, Facebook market. Other than, I guess, a sofa or a bed, anything that has anything to do with hygiene, um, I think anything can be taken off uh, Facebook Market. I think it's fantastic. I got my desk from Facebook Market for free. <laughs> I got this cupboard, the black one behind me with nothing on it, because I'm currently packing, uh, for free. This is business. And uh, a bunch of things. So a quick room tour. When I first arrived in Hong Kong, uh, I had this chair, the white one, and this cabinet thing, the white thing, and then uh, that was pretty much um, everything the previous landlords were kind enough to leave behind. This massive cu cupboard that cannot be moved, this stayed. Uh, the white cupboard here also stayed, and then. Um, I guess that's about it. Everything else is either bought from Facebook Market or IKEA. So the chair, Facebook Market, the desk, uh, Facebook Market for free. This cabinet here, Facebook Market for free. Printer, Facebook Market. Chair, again, Facebook Market. And then cupboard, Facebook Market for free. I did buy a uh, sofa bed from Ikea, but after a few months, I realized that um, the sofa bed was not the best for my back. So I decided to sell it to someone else. Business. And uh, right now, like I said, I was packing. Currently packing right now. So, I mean, I'm literally just using this flexible mattress, putting it on the floor. And uh, that's my duvet and my pillow. I'm pretty much just crashing on the floor these days. Come on, I'm broke, baby. So it's been some time since I have uh, been back to Hong Kong and um, since I was studying abroad, after I graduated, I uh, decided to go back to China for a while just to see family and then once I moved back to Hong Kong by myself, I quickly realized that uh, I didn't have that many friends here, you know, I, I, I didn't know that many people that I could hang out with and um and i mean this is where i realized that you know, joining a sports team a local sports team and for me it was the Cosway bay rugby team uh it's probably one of the best ways to uh meet new people when you're 
when you're in an environment that you don't know that many people or when you move to a new city. Causeway Bay, the boys, has been fantastic to me. It's been amazing playing alongside them. Uh, it's just a shame that uh, last season, the season got cut short because of COVID. Rugby in Hong Kong is slowly coming back. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm a little bit unfit, out of shape, and I'm uh, slowly getting back into the routine of running every night. Running every night. Stop the cap. <laughs> uh, I, I try to, at least every other night. And um, for anyone who is going to a new city or kind of going into an environment where they don't know that many people, I cannot recommend anything else other than joining a local sports team. Find a sport that you enjoy or you really want to try uh, and then just get stuck in, man. Uh, really, uh, all the sports teams that I've been a part of, uh, especially rugby teams, has been more than welcoming and just, it's just a really, really good way to meet new people and share something you enjoy doing. For my university friends that want to know what I'm doing, whether I've got a job or not, uh, I have to say, like since since graduating in 2020, I've had several plans kind of wiped by COVID. I'm sure many of you guys also have had the same scenario, situation. Um, masters wasn't going to be something I want to look into because obviously you guys know me back in school. I'm not the I'm not the A grade student, and um, I wanted to to, get, to to do something else before looking into a masters. I don't even know what I want to study. I've been doing a lot of freelancing. I've been uh, working on a lot of um, online businesses. Yeah. Trying to uh, get more involved with the whole Web3 world and cryptos and the NFT. Yeah. Just trying to understand, but mainly focusing on a lot of online business, um, like the one that I, that, I, that I started back in school when I was helping people moving luggages. We've, um, we've expanded that to airport transfers. Yeah. And then, more down the line, I'm, I'm helping people buy crypto in Hong Kong. Yeah. Quite a lot going on, but the main reason why I moved back to Hong Kong was because uh, I had this project that I wanted to uh, get started with my friends. We wanted to create a mobile app that was helping uh, university students connect with high school students to kind of do um, information sharing and mentorship. Um, yeah, it's. It was tough. Like I, uh, to be honest, I I underestimated the difficulty of tech. How do you do that? <laughs> but, but back in 2020, when we just graduated, I thought I could probably fix up a um, mobile app or a website that has all the functions. How do you do that? <laughs> but, but building the platform was uh, was a lot more work uh, than expected, and freelancing was quite an ex uh, experience. Like getting freelance coders on board and developers it was uh, quite an experience right now to be honest i think the project's a little bit stuck and uh, i'm just kind of shifting my focus away from the project right now because i feel like i'm putting a lot of time and energy into it yeah but not a lot is coming back out whereas there are other things going on that are more or less automated and uh and really kind of supporting me financially while I'm in Hong Kong. Since my parents pretty much told me that they won't be uh, financially supporting me, the money has to come somewhere, right? So... This is business! But other things is going on right now and um, ha I'm having a good time. It's, it's a lot of freelancing. Uh, I've told myself basically, you know, I'm not 100% sure which industry I want to go into. I don't think right now hospitality, uh, which is what I studied, is uh, the best route to go down right now. Uh, why not give myself some time just to try different things? For example, this YouTube channel, uh, for example, Web3. Um, I did a bunch of stuff, uh, FMB. Well, basically, I guess that is hospitality, but yeah, just to make ends meet. I did, uh, I did dog walking for a while. I, I sold and made ice cream. Most of, some of you guys in Switzerland probably know that. Going into the topic of finances, tracking all my spendings and then tracking the money going out and the money coming in just to make sure that uh, next month everything is okay in, in terms of the utility bills. Uh, oh yeah, that's one thing that I underestimated when I arrived in Hong Kong because because my parents are kind enough to basically let me come back to our place and, and, and stay here. 
but uh, the conditions are that I take care of utility bills. So this includes management fees, um, water, gas, electricity, and uh, and even like this tax that we have on, on properties in, in Hong Kong every three months, I think. Yeah. And that I un underestimated, but I'm, I'm making ends meet. So everything is still going fine for now. The last uh, thing that I that I learned this year is uh, the importance of family. Salute me, familia. You know, I've been away from my family and my girlfriend for a year now. Uh, my families are based in Guangzhou and Shenzhen, and my girlfriend is currently doing uh, her work in uh, Be Beijing. I was hoping by the end of last year that the border in between Hong Kong and China will be fully open. <laughs> Last year, around Christmas, Hong Kong went into basically a semi-lockdown again because of the fact that, you know, COVID cases are rising. Rugby was cancelled, so obviously they had to push back the dates for the border opening. And then after that, once Hong Kong started easing up on restrictions, uh, cases started to rise in China which means obviously they had to push back the, the border opening dates again. And I mean, this border opening dates has been, has been rumored and pushed back multiple times. And uh, I'm slowly giving up on hope, hoping that it will open, you know? And so that's why I've basically been in Hong Kong by myself for a whole year. If they opened it back in uh, Christmas or the end, uh, the end of last year, I would have been back to Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Beijing, just to see family. What I learned from this is that, you know, family is important. You've, you've got to keep the people you love close to you. And, uh, and this is why I'm, I'm basically starting to plan and pack my things so I can slowly uh, prepare myself to go back to, to China to see if there are any opportunities in China to be closer to family. Maybe I can show you guys the rest of uh, China when I um, travel around. Yeah. I actually plan to be back in China by the end of this month. Halfway through my packing and kind of organization planning, there's been a leak from upstairs. I'm currently in touch with the lady upstairs to, to fix this leak because uh, due to this leak, it's actually damaged my, my roof in my kitchen. Quite, uh, quite badly and there are like bits of rocks and sand falling down. So yeah, this, this, this whole year in Hong Kong, so from last year, June to now, has been quite an experience. Uh, living by yourself gives you a lot of freedom, but at the same time, it also forces you to take on a lot of responsibilities. I think uh, one funny thing uh, from this whole experience is uh, six months into me being in Hong Kong by myself, I'm getting these calls from my parents, right? Ah, who is that? I'm getting these calls from my mom asking me if I'm okay, am I doing all right, do I need money and everything. And I, and I get calls from my father asking me if I'm dead yet, uh, am I eating well, you know, the typical Chinese parents questions. And uh, I feel like they themselves, they are quite surprised that I'm still surviving. Like in, in Cantonese, we, we call it Zap San. And they are quite surprised that I, I haven't asked them for any financial support or, um, or kind of uh, any help with a anything. Uh, I've been pretty sufficient by myself, just about getting by. Basically, what I say is, if I do need the help or if I'm dying, I'll let them know uh, and I will ask. But if I don't ask, just don't worry about me. I'm okay, uh, I'm getting by, I'm eating pretty good, gain a bit of weight in lockdown, trying to lose it now. And, um, and, and yeah, and hope, hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll see them soon. And uh, hope, hopefully I can take you guys and, uh, and, and show you uh, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Beijing and other cities that I'll be traveling around. I've got a few more vlogs that I have in mind, some ideas that I'm gonna do in Hong Kong before I leave. So uh, make sure you guys subscribe, uh, leave a comment, you know, chat some shit. I know some of you guys are probably laughing right now, but um, yeah, uh, give me a follow.